Well, happy Friday, everyone. Corey Barker here, and today I've got a very special Super Bowl weekend tutorial for all of you. And uh, we're going to be going a little bit more in-depth with 3D this time around. We're going to create the Lombardi Trophy entirely in 3D here inside Photoshop CS6 Extended. And if you'd like to follow along, you can certainly download the Trophy Kit, as I call it. And it's just a collection of documents that I'm going to be using throughout this tutorial to build the overall uh, image here. And the first one we're going to start with is this document called Ball Start. And this is basically the start file to create the shape of the football for the trophy element. Now, inside this document, I've already got a path created here, as you can see. And it's basically half of the football. Because we're going to be creating a revolved object, we only need to create half of it in order to do that. So you can see, if I zoom in here, you can see what the shape is uh, made of. I've got no control points on the lines uh, in between these segments here. And that's important because if you have a control point here, it's going to create another segment of your 3D object. I'm going to keep it all one element there. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new blank layer and fill it with 50% gray. And while that path is selected, I'm just going to go under the 3D menu and go down here and choose New 3D Extrusion from Selected Path. Now, when I'm changing the angle of view on my object, I don't want to rotate the object itself. Meaning if I were to grab the object and rotate it, you'll notice the ground plane does not move. I want to be sure to avoid that. So if you're going to change the angle of anything you're viewing, I want to make sure it's the current view, which is the camera. Notice how the ground plane moves around with it. Because we want to keep that object on the ground plane and straight. So I'm just going to tilt this up so I can see what I'm doing from the top here. And what we're going to do is select the layer one. And then go over here to the Properties panel, and in the second tab over, we have this Deform, the or the Deform settings, rather. Now inside here, I'm going to go into the, under the de Deformation axis and anchor it on the left side. Just click on that left side center block there, and it puts that white block there. Then go down to the Horizontal Angle X, and I'm just going to drag this slider to the left, and you'll see the graphic wrap around and ultimately complete the shape of the football. Now, the problem here is that there's this hole in the center. Now, to fix that, I'm just going to simply take the extrusion depth and drop it down until it, that hole closes up right there. So I'm going to reselect current view and then go into the view menu here in the properties panel and choose default camera. It's going to bring me back to the front view of that football shape. Now what I want to apply is a bump map. I was trying to figure out how I was going to add the seams and the laces to the football and was going to do it as a separate 3D object, but found that to be a bit more challenging because I wasn't able to put the object on a curve or anything like that. So using a bump map was going to be the next best option here. Now the bump map I'm using here is actually also in this kit, and it's part of the download here. If I open it up, you can see what's going on in this document. So notice I've got these black lines, top and bottom, and in the center here. These will produce the seams of the football. And then these, this little graphic element here doesn't look like much now. This is actually going to be the laces of the football. Now, it doesn't look like that now, but it took a lot of trial and error to sort out this file to get this to look just right, which is why I wasn't going to necessarily recreate it, but you can download this document. It's part of the download. You can actually look at the layers and see how I went about creating it. Now, the reason why everything's different colors is that when you create a bump map, things will get pushed back or pulled forward depending on the bump setting and also depending on the range of tones in that bump map. For instance, the gray in the background will leave the graphic unaffected, will leave the shape unaffected. These darker black lines, top and bottom and center, will actually push back a little bit and give that indentation of the seam in the football. The lace graphic here, notice that the laces themselves are white. White is going to come forward and it's going to be coming forward the most, so we and the, we know the laces are going to be the highest element on there, so they're going to be the, the brightest. And then the holes that the laces go into are a little bit darker. Those will get indented into the graphic or into the 3D object. And then the laces underneath these horizontal laces are just two objects that are a little, kind of a middle gray, and they're lighter than the seam here, but darker than those laces there, which means that they'll protrude just beneath those laces, but above those seam lines. So I know it might sound a little confusing, but again, that's why I wanted you to go ahead and be able to download the layer document so you can actually see what's going on here. But that is the bump map we're going to use. So I'm going to go ahead and close that. 
back into the 3D object here. I'm going to go and select the, the extrusion material for this object, which is layer one extrusion material. Then again, over in the properties panel here, we're going to go to the bump setting and just go ahead and bump that setting or bump the bump setting <laughs> all the way up to 100%. Then click on that folder icon next to it and choose load texture. And in here we're going to go and choose that bump start and click open. And there you can see the seams and everything fall right into place. Now if I go and grab the current view again and just move this around, you can see the seams on all four sides of the ball. And then the laces are right there in front. And that is being created again by that bump setting here at 100% and then that bump map, which is this document right here. So there's our football. So now we need to go ahead and create the base of our trophy here. So again, I have a file inside of here called base start. And inside here, we're actually gonna create the shape ourselves. And it's really quite easy. We're gonna use simple settings here inside Photoshop. I've just, this is just a square document. You can see it's just 10 by 10 at 125 pixels per inch. Go into the toolbar into the shape tools and go down and choose the polygon tool. Now up here in the options bar, we're going to go over here to where the sides are. We want it to have three sides because the Lombardi Trophy base has three sides to it. Click on this icon here and make sure you check on star. And then you want to indent sides by 40%. And then you want to make sure that smooth indents is checked on as well. And this is going to create this shape like this. Actually, let me make the background white so you can see. When I draw the shape out, there's the base of our trophy. So I'm going to hold the shift key down so I can get... I actually want it to be... Just like that, there we go. I want the flat end, yeah, there we go. So I want this flatter end up top here, so I want it to be completely angled, there we go. So there's my shape for the base of the trophy. Now I'm gonna go back to filling that background with gray, and then once again, 3D, new 3D extrusion from selected layer, and it creates that element. Now if I rotate the camera view around here, we can see that shape is created, it's sitting on the ground plane. What I want to do is actually rotate it on that ground plane a little bit. So go into your 3D panel again. Make sure you have the object that's selected. And then over here in the properties panel, the last tab over is the coordinates. Go over here into the X for the angle, which is the middle numbers here, and the X one, you notice if I move the scrubby slider back and forth, it rotates that object. We're just going to go ahead and rotate this negative 90. So now we're seeing the front of that object. And again, if I change the current view, now it's sitting flat on that surface there. All right, so I'm gonna push this back a little bit in space. And again, we can rotate that around and see what's going on. So obviously this trophy is gonna be a little bit taller than this. So select the layer two and increase the extrusion depth and you can see it will go upward. And we can bring that angle of view down a little bit so we can see it. Even push it back a little bit there so you can see what's going on here. So notice I'm still kind of selecting current view to change my angle of view. I want to keep it flat on that ground plane there. So there's my object. So I'm going to actually go and rotate a little bit to the side here and let's change some things about the appearance here. Let's increase the extrusion depth just a little bit more. Oh, don't want to move the object but the angle there. And then inside that properties panel, select on the second tab where you have the deform features once again. Now down here, I'm gonna drop the taper and notice what's gonna happen. It's gonna make that top edge smaller a little bit. And this is where the football is gonna go right up here. And I'm also going to activate shear in this, in this properties and then change the vertical angle. Notice we can bend it this way or that way. So I'm going to actually bend it in the, to negative 3, so it's kind of, kind of a lean to it. So it's like it's leaning back there. So if I change my current view, there's that base sitting there pretty good. All right. So we got the base looking pretty good. We can always tweak it later. Let's bring it back to the front view of the camera here. And it's really close, so we'll just hold down the Shift key and use the 3D slide tool and push it back in space there. There we go. Okay, so now let's go ahead and grab our football. We're going to go back to that image that contains the ball, and I'm just going to grab that layer, that 3D layer, and drag it into my working base file. Add the shift key when you do this so it just drops it in the center there like that. Okay, 
So now I'm going to push that back just a little bit, and now I'm ready to merge these two elements together. Now here is where it's a good time to actually do a save. I'm actually going to do a save as, and we'll just save it to the desktop here. Because you don't want to get too far and then have something happen, and you have to start all over again. I often will save before I merge two 3D objects just to be safe, because early on in earlier versions of Photoshop, there was a lot of crashing going on when it would, uh, when it would merge 3D objects. So, Okay, so now, go into 3D. Actually, no, I'm just going to go and use the simple merge keyboard shortcut. Just, press, just make sure you have the top most 3D object selected. Press Command or Control E, and it merges those two elements together. There we go. So there's the ball. Now it's wedged. It's actually molded inside of the uh, base there. So I'm going to select the object itself. Even though it's merged into a single 3D layer, we can still manipulate them independently. And I'm going to use my axis widget here to highlight that arrow and drag the ball up to the top. And... Let's scale down the base just a little bit. Bring it down just a little bit. There, you go, like that. Now, again, I'm going to reselect the ball and scale it up. I'm just selecting the text tool here in the options bar and scale the ball up just a little bit. There we go. So, again, let's push this current view back and then rotate. Just like that. Now let's select the ball again, and now I'm going to use the axis widget once again and rotate it. So if I put my um, cursor over that one part right there, where it gives me that little ring, now I can rotate it and then slide it down like that. And maybe slide it up just a little bit more. So if I change my current view once again, there I can see I've got the basic shape of my Lombardi trophy. How cool is that? All right, so let's put it in position where we want to see what's gonna be happening here. So I'm just gonna kinda of rotate it. Let's get my angle right here. Let's just kind of zoom in a little bit closer. Okay, so now I want to add, I'm actually going to put a background fill here. Let's just fill it with white so we can see what's going on here. You can see that shadow better and everything like that. So, now we're ready to add our surface property. So, let's go into the 3D panel once again. And inside of here, we've got our two objects. Layer 2, which is the base here, and then layer 3, which is the ball itself. So, we're actually going to... Um, just modify a few surface properties on each one of these. Now, we're obviously looking at the extrusion material on both of these objects. So you can see the laces and the bump map and everything's holding in place there on, on the ball itself. So. so let's select the Layer 2 extrusion material and then jump over to the Properties panel and bump this reflection up to 100% and the shine. Bring that to 100% as well. Then reselect the other object, the other layer extrusion, and then bring that reflection up to 100% and bring the shine up to 100% as well. Now you can see it's already starting to reflect that default image-based light that we've got inside of this image. If I select the environment and then use my 3D tool to manipulate that um, image-based light, you can see what's going on there. Now, that is, we are going to be using an image-based light, but not this default one. It's just, it just looks like a few spotlights on it and doesn't really give us the, um, the look we're going for. Uh, we're after here, but inside of that folder, again, that trophy kit folder, I, I was thinking about it, and I was looking at some pictures of the Lombardi trophy, and notice, what is it reflecting when it's being shot? Well, it's going to reflect the backdrop of the studio it's being shot in. It's going to reflect any softboxes that might be shining on it. So I thought, why not get a picture of a softbox? And then I just kind of created it and doubled it over like this in this document. Ultimately, I came, with, came up with this graphic. Now this is made of that light box image, but I did I like a distortion. I did some polar coordinates on it just to kind of tweak it and get it to uh, get some uh, covered areas. I added a few gradients in there as well. So it looks really abstract right now as a environment map. But watch what happens when we apply it to our image here. So again, back inside of this document, I'm going to go into the environment settings and then go into the image based light. Here in the properties panel, it's at the very top. And if we go to Edit Texture, you can see there's the current image-based light. It's those dots that are on the object. It's just a series of dots on this black background. Very simple. But we're going to go into this little folder icon and choose Replace Texture. Go inside our trophy kit. There's our IBL start. Click Open. And voila. 
now we can control by moving that object around. Again, when you have the environment setting highlighted here in the 3D panel, and you have your 3D tool selected, you can go in here and manipulate the positioning of that light. And there we have our realistic Lombardi trophy. Now, not quite done yet. We still have our default light over here in this object. If we go into the light section of the 3D panel, we have an infinite light which has been created by default. I'm gonna turn that one off. You'll notice it got a little bit darker on the element there. I am gonna add a new point light. We're actually gonna be adding a couple of these. So, actually let's reposition the object here just a little bit. Put it in the center there so we can see what's going on here. So back in the lights, I've got the point light here. The light is represented by this little yellow wireframe and it's got the axis widget on there. Again, using the same 3D man manipulation tools, I can push the light toward the object, slide it around it, and just do all kinds of different things here. But now what I'm gonna do is actually position this first one above the ball right there. Notice how it's giving me a little bit of a glare in the ball there. If I turn it on and off, you can see it's giving me that little bit of light right there. That's what I want there. However, I do not want it casting a shadow. This is a great thing about working with 3D instead of you doing this as a photo shoot is I can control the light. I can determine whether a light will cast a shadow or not. So in this point light here in the properties section, I'm simply going to uncheck shadow. So I still get the light on the object, but it's not casting that annoying shadow. Now I'm gonna add a second point light. And this one I'm going to position lower and to the left over here and notice where the shadow is ending up here. I'm actually gonna push it a little bit closer and a little bit further away, there we go. This is gonna give me that little bit of a drop off shadow on the object. But I don't want it to be a harsh shadow so what I'm gonna do is first go over here into the properties section and set the intensity of that light down to about 50%. But I'm also gonna set the softness of my shadow to around 20. And if I do a quick render here, just do Shift Option Command R, and we'll see it start to render, and we can see that shadow's getting softer as it um, goes away there. It looks pretty good. Might wanna reposition that light. But this is why you do these renders, just to, to determine where the light's gonna fall on the object. Let's actually move it a little bit closer and maybe. So I have a background that I'm gonna use to go ahead and put this on. So I've already got this kind of gradient background on it. And let's go ahead and get our newly created trophy. I'm just gonna drag that layer, again, holding down the shift key and just drag it over to this new document. Now again, I wanna keep, because I want the shadows to be in the right place, I wanna make sure I keep it on the ground plane. So again, change the current view of the object and we can get something like this. I'll slide it toward me a little bit here, maybe rotate the angle. This is the kind of fun that's to be had with 3D is that once the object's created, you can have a lot of fun changing the angle and just doing all kinds of different things to it. And I can go in here and change the angle, of course, of that environmental light there. So we can do something like that, get a nice shine on it. And of course, we have that, since we have that ground plane, it's also casting a shadow, let's create a little bit of a reflection. So I'm gonna go over here in the ground plane section, set the opacity of my reflection to about 50, and then maybe the roughness, so it's not a mirror reflection, but rather just kind of a subtle reflection, set that roughness at about 25, and let's just do a quick render once again. And there we can see. We've got our object reflecting and everything looks really cool. So again, a lot of fun you can have with 3D. This was, you know, basically two simple objects, but being able to use those bump maps and doing all that manipulation, but that environmental um, or that uh, image-based light is what really makes the difference there. Once the object is created, we wrap it with this light to give it that really kind of metallic chrome look. And then you can just go around and play with different settings and different angles and just have a lot of fun with 3D here inside Photoshop.